I'm delighted to be with you here again and I want to share a few thoughts with you that I have in my heart. I'm in a cafe in central London. Um, I'm sorry about the noise. There's a baby downstairs crying and you might hear the sound of the baby's voice. Beautiful voice by the way. Um, I love it when babies cry, not because they're crying but there's something about the sound of a baby's voice that is very soothing. Obviously, if the baby is in pain, then that's not a very pleasant sound. But if the baby is just excited and playing around and just screaming, I like it. It reminds me of when I was younger. And so you might hear the sound of the baby sometime during, our, during the next few minutes whilst I, I share my thoughts and my opinions with you. I left the house, my house, this morning, and as I was walking out of the house, I reached into the refrigerator for an apple. And I very quickly ate the apple before I left, and just as I was walking out of the kitchen, I chucked the rest of what was remaining from the apple in the refuse bin. And as I walked out of the house, something hit me. And what struck me was that in every kitchen, at least in most kitchens in the, in the and this may not really apply to those who um, may not be fortunate enough to have both a refuse can and a refrigerator in their kitchen, but in most kitchens you have a refrigerator and you have a refuse can or refuse bin. Both of them are storage devices. Both of them will hold items. One of them is intended for items that you no longer have a value for and you want to get rid of from your life. The other is for storing items, but items you want to preserve, that you want to use in the future in your life. By reaching into my refrigerator and picking up the, the apple, I realized that in the same way, every day, we do the same thing. We are either reaching into the refrigerator of our mind and reaching for something that is empowering, something that is educational, something that would create the future we're trying to get to. Or we're reaching into the refuge store of our mind and looking back on things that we no longer want in our life and things we want to get rid of. And it struck me that you've got to evaluate everything around you. Your relationships, your behavior, your attitude, your philosophies, your beliefs. There are beliefs that you have that you've held on to for too long that haven't served you well. Those beliefs may be best for the recycle bin or for the refuse bin. And maybe it's time to clean out your refrigerator and create space for much better empowering beliefs, much better habits, much better people and relationships that can nurture you but also can preserve you. And I thought it was quite interesting that one item or one container is to preserve and the other container is for items you no longer want to preserve, you want to get rid of. And, and I thought it would be useful to just share that with you just to say, why don't you ask yourself the question, in your life are you reaching into the refuse bin of your mind and putting out things that you no longer want and dumping it in your mind, or are you reaching into the refrigerator of your mind and trying to store things that will create the future you want. Now I want you to imagine this scenario. Your mind is your most important asset. The most important thing you have is your mind. If you manage your mind well, your life gets managed well. Because all of our battles, all of our challenges, all of our setbacks begin in the mind. And those who have been able to train their mind, because the mind needs to be disciplined, 
The mind is not something you allow to just behave the way you should do. The mind is there to serve you. Your mind has three primary purposes. The first is the imagination. The imagination is so powerful that Albert Einstein said that imagination is more powerful than knowledge. And I believe him. I believe him, and I believe him because knowledge is finite. There is a limited amount of knowledge that anyone can have. But imagination has no limits. The limitation of your imagination is only set by you. But everybody's imagination has no limits. If you can conceive any idea in your mind, and you can believe it, and you're willing to work hard to it, I believe that you can achieve it. I believe that we've been given this, what I call a, almost a godlike conscience and a mind that allows us to create the future out of nothing. I believe that when we use our imagination and we come as close as we can to supreme intelligence, the infinite intelligence, I believe that we come as close as we can um, to God. Now don't get carried away and get hung up by the use of a word. You know, whether you call it Allah, whether you call it God, whether you call it Jehovah, whether you call it um, Rabbi, whether you call it love, it's not what you call a thing that makes it a thing. So don't get hung up with a name. The point I'm making is that I believe that when we use our imagination, we use it well. No. Just, just bear that in mind that there are different ways of using imagination. You can use it constructively or you can use it destructively. And whenever you use your imagination in the way that it was designed to be used, that you come as close as possible to infinite intelligence because you are at that point in time creating something out of nothing. Now if you're listening to this, I want you to do me a quick favor. I want you to just stop. And I want you to look around you, wherever you are, and just observe what's around your environment. Now if I look around me here, and I might spin this around so you can see what I have. But I have some chairs, and I have some desks, and I have people. And because I'm in a cafe, and I'm going to raise this up so you can see, because there's a mirror behind me. So you can see what I have around me. Now, everything I have around me, the items, the furniture, the accessories, the lights, everything was created by someone. Nothing that we see came out of nowhere. It came from someone's thoughts. Everything that we see has come from something that we couldn't see. So your imagination is where you create everything that exists and everything that you want to exist in your future. And your ability to use your mind well is what separates you from the rest of the world. The second function of your mind is as a, as a memory. And the memory part of the mind is really what I started up talking about. Some people use their mind and the memory of the mind in a way that they use it as a club to beat themselves up. You know, they always go back to the refuse bin of their mind and dig out their past and dig out things that they didn't, um, they perhaps could have done differently. And they are willing to let go and they are willing to forgive themselves. You've got to train yourself on how to use your mind. I believe that the memory function of the mind is for one primary purpose. That is my view. I don't I don't accept I don't you know I don't say that you accept everything I say. But I believe that the memory part of the mind is is for replaying and remembering positive events. Let me give you a good example. I like to encourage people when I meet them to make a habit of keeping a journal. It could be an electronic journal or it could be a, a normal standard journal. And in the journal, this journal should be called your victory journal. What does that mean? Well, a victory journal is simply a journal where you record all of your past successes, where you record all of the victories you've had in your life. I think it's important 
and I think it's necessary. Why? Because I believe that there will be times in your life when you go through very difficult experiences and difficult phases where you start to doubt who you are, where you start to doubt whether you have what it takes to achieve whatever dream you're pursuing or whatever goal you're pursuing. And the best way to get your self-confidence back up, but also the best way to remember who you are is for you to find a way to say to yourself what you would wish that other people would say to you. Now you can say this with words and that's where we go to get the whole concept of affirmations and self-talk. Self-talk is very important because it's you telling yourself what you wish someone else could say about you. On the other hand, there are times when you may not necessarily have the strength to use words that are affirmative to wish yourself and therefore that's where you need either written words or captured words in pictures. And this is where your victory journal comes in, where you can go back and look at what you've achieved. And from what you've achieved, you can, you can be proud of who you are and you can take action. And that is what I think the memory should be used for, predominantly, to replay previous events that have happened in your life to give you the inspiration and the motivation to push on. I don't believe that the mind is there for you to remember the failures. I think pain and failure, so pain itself happens automatically. You don't have to worry about pain. You don't have to go thinking about pain. Pain has a way of uh, scheduling itself and making itself a, a guest in your life. Your responsibility is to create pleasure and to create experiences that displace any negative doubt, any fear that you might have. Now, for some people, you might say, I disagree with you, Mensa, and I think the memory should be used as a storage um, facility. And I say, that's okay, you know, everyone has his own opinion. But I believe genuinely that uh, the bluntest pen is much better than the sharpest mind. Your mind is not there for you to store all the data in the world. Your mind is there to help you create the future you want. I think there is a place and there is a time for using your mind for storage. But your mind is not a filing cabinet. It's not a warehouse. Your mind is for creativity. That's what your mind is primarily for, to create, not to store. You know, get a journal, get a book, and transfer everything that you think is important to a place where you can remember. And this is the reason why it's important. Because if you have information that you consider to be important, that you choose to live in your mind, there's a good chance that you might forget it. Why? Well, because every day we have between 50,000 and 70,000 thoughts. So think about that. If you have between 50,000 and 70,000 thoughts every day, then it means that every year that you have 365 times 50 to 70,000. But that is a lot of thoughts in one year. And so to remember one experience or one event out of the millions could be quite difficult. And I would say capture it somewhere in writing, but have it in a way where you can retrieve the information when you need it. The mind is for creativity, use it to create. Now the third part of the mind, as I you know, round this up, is the mind is used as a resizing facility. With the mind you can resize all the experiences you have. You can take a, an experience that you've had in your mind and you can shrink it, you can make it so small that it becomes insignificant, or you can blow it up and make it so big that it almost kills you. Have you ever had an experience where something happened, unless it was a, maybe it wasn't a positive experience, and you, it's got you very upset, and then you 
bump into one of your friends and you start to share your experience and they make a statement like, I think you're blowing this out of proportion. I like kids. Kids have a way of reminding you that you're using the mind and the resizing part of the mind in the wrong way. Sometimes you might be with kids and you do something and they say, you're making a big deal out of it. Why are you making a big deal out of it? Relax. And that is because you've taken an experience and maybe, rightly or wrongly, you've resized it, you've made it so big. But this is why it's important. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel. Whatever you focus on, you're going to attract into your life. Like a magnet. A magnet always has two sides. It has the positive pole and the negative pole. Light will always attract. Light will always attract light. So if you have positive thoughts, you will attract positive ideas to your life. But also, if you have positive thoughts, you will attract positive people. So always remember that whatever you choose or however you choose, choose to use your mind will decide the experiences that you have. So your mind is really the most important thing you have. And you've got to guard your mind every single day. And you guard your mind by making a deliberate effort and a deliberate decision to stand guard. See yourself as a protector of your mind. And how do you do this? Well, just create like a gatekeeping system. I'll give you an example of how I do this in my personal life. I haven't watched the news maybe for maybe two years or two and a half years um, intentionally. What I mean by that is I haven't purposefully put on the news to watch. You never, you never see me do that. Um, similarly, I wouldn't pick up the newspaper to read it. Now, I don't consider that to be some form of a heroic event, no, but I understand my mind. And I know that my mind is naturally attracted to sensational information, and it just keeps replaying in my mind for days after I've seen it. And so I discipline my mind not to focus on the news. So what I do is I, I keep away the negative information from me by protecting what comes into my, that's my gatekeeping system. One, I don't watch the news. Number two, I filter the information that comes through me and to me. Number three, I choose the relationships I have in my life so that the words that come through what I hear, what I see, through my relationships are consistent with the person I want to be. The next way I do this is I make sure that on a daily basis that I feed my mind with positive information. And I start this first thing in the morning. But listen to something inspirational, listen to something educational, listen to something empowering, listen to something instructive. Like, uh, think about this, like uh, if you had a, a glass with some Coke, like Coca-Cola, in a large glass and you were to pour in water into that glass let's assume that the coca-cola takes up about two one third of the entire glass now if i start pouring in clean clear water into that glass until i filled up the glass until it would i filled up the remaining two thirds of water what happens is that the coca-cola gets diluted the more I continue to flush that glass with clean, clear water, it gets to a point where it starts to overpour, overfill, and then suddenly the water displaces the Coca-Cola. It dilutes it to the point where the percentage of water to Coca-Cola continues to increase to the point where it becomes 100% water. So what I've done is I've displaced the Coca-Cola. And that's the same way your mind functions, by listening to positive information, by empowering yourself and educating yourself. You're pouring in clean, clear water into your mind to neutralize the negative that your mind attracts. And that is how it is, very simple. Become intentional about your mind because all of the battles, all of the challenges, all of the setbacks, all of your beliefs depend on your mind. And I thought it would be useful to share this, this with you. That's, that's really all I have. Um, I'm getting, leaving now to go see a friend of mine. Uh, and 
I want to wish you the best in whatever you do. Maybe someday I might get to see you in person, and maybe someday I might get to maybe hold your hands and shake your hands. Um, but I think by this interaction, I feel as though I've, um, I know you. Um, I want you to reach out to me, tell me who you are, tell me what your dreams are. And let me tell you how I can help you make those dreams a reality. I believe that if you're listening to this, that I am called to serve you. And I believe that with all of my heart that I, I can provide some value to you. But I want to know how. And the only way I can know how is when I get to know you. So if you're not following me on Twitter, if you're not following me on Facebook, if you're not following me on Instagram or any of the other social media uh, platforms, why don't you reach out, send me a tweet, send me a Facebook, send me an Instagram and um, tell me what your name is, tell me what your dreams are and let me tell you back in my own way how I can help you make those dreams a reality. I wish you all the best.